let's begin on a uh, python <coughs> tuples so i can still say that tuples are, are under python arrays where under python arrays we said we have got a uh, python arrays or uh, or the python collection we can say that we have got lists we have got sets we have got dictionaries so yesterday we did check on lists let let us now today check on tuples so tuples are still in the same category uh, the reason I say they are in the same category is that uh, they are used to store multiple items. Remember we said if you want to store multiple items in your variable, you can use a list, you can use a set, you can use a dictionary. Otherwise, those are the only ones that, may, that makes it possible for you to store multiple items. So by saying that, I mean if I have got a variable x, I can store multiple items such as 1, so you see, uh, I can store multiple items in that as compared to when maybe I have a variable y, I can only store maybe a single item. So in that case, I've used a list. So in a set, this is how you can store using the set. So I am going to begin by, by discussing how sets are created, how you create Python sets by using the, the set constructor then uh, uh, not set but tuples so uh, i want to talk about how you can create python tuples then you can use the tuple constructor so let's begin by uh, by checking on the tuples so tuples you can write them using braces or you can some people call them uh, round brackets so you can have a tuple t uh, a tuple t i can decide to name it in such a way so that maybe I can have a string, then I can have an integer, I can also have a put, I can also have a complex number, then I can print my t, I can also print the data type of t by just saying type, uh, type, so that should be type, uh, type t, then i can also do something else i can also print the length the length of t so remember all this we, we have been discussing about it so yesterday you are just to go and check about the full uh full statements or the control for so uh you can see we have printed out our say our tuple uh using uh the print output function so we have printed our tuple all the values of the of the tuple can be listed here we have also gotten the data type as tuple and the length it has got four items in it so that is one way you can achieve uh creating a tuple you can also achieve uh using uh you, you can also achieve using so let's see If you use the tuple constructor, then right here I'm going to, to print out y. So yeah, you are going to find most people are not going to most most cases people don't use the the constructors, but for your case you can always decide to use either way. So if you are comfortable using the tuple constructor. Or if you are also comfortable using the braces or the round brackets. So I want to just uh, make it clear that the tuple constructor, it's written like that. But now when you are defin defining a, uh, a tuple inside it, uh, you now put the... <coughs> I, you, you now put in another round bracket in it. So you can observe that I'm using two round brackets. It's similar to it's similar to any other constructor you use, whether it is a list, whether it is a, a set. So uh, that one is also to be to be taken care of. So that is one way. You have seen you can you can also have many data types in it. So you can have puts, integers. Uh, you can also have strings. So now uh, I want us to. You have seen how you can get the type. 
then you have seen about the tapu constructor which is this this one so now i just want to to iterate, to iterate or maybe to to also uh, make it clear that uh in python in python arrays so in python i think i should use I should use this one. So, so th this one is a multi-line comment. So, in Python, arrays, in Python arrays, you have got something such as list. We talked about that. You have got tuples. What we are do looking at. Then you have got something we call a set. Then you have got dictionary. So, uh, anytime I talk, I talk about uh, Python arrays. Some people also refer them to as collections. So anytime I, I, I talk of Python arrays, so th those are the main things I'll be referring to. So now let's see how you can access a tuple item. So to access a tuple item, I'm going to want to access uh, the item uh, 12. So to do that, I'm going to come here and say print. So I want to get to access item 12 from tuple T. So I'm going to print tuple T as T. Then I want to get the index of 12. I think it's 1. That is 0, 1. So I expect to print uh, 12. So that is one. Remember, remember when you are getting. So maybe I can comment this and say uh, getting. So I can comment and say getting the number 12. That is uh, accessing tuple item. Accessing tuple items. So that is one way you can access tuple items. A single item. You can also use the negative indexing. So let's see. Le let's come here and experiment both of them. So I can access this one as negative one. So I'm literally going to say negative one to access uh, this one. So what I'm accessing is a complex number. It has got the read and the imaginary part. So maybe sometimes back you might subscribe to uh, a mathematics class. Uh, we can we can also go through the basic mathematics required uh, in programming. But that one maybe will be sometimes later. Then we have got T. Uh, I want to access a range of items. So I'm going to access it using a positive range using a negative indexing range type so i want to access from 12 to this to this one so from 12 this is index one i put a colon then one two so index one two three so because i want to access even this one i'm going to say four that is one case then i want to use the negative indexing that is negative one negative two negative three so because i want to access neg until 12 i'm going to say negative four all the way to negative one then you can also have maybe in such a way i want to access all the way from 12 uh proceeding on my right so i'm going to say one and a full colon then if i want to act if I want to access up to this one, which is in index 2, I'm going to say T, then I'm going to put a colon and 2. So let's see uh, the output. Yeah, so uh, you can see just as uh, we expected it to. This is how you can access tuple items. So those are the common cases uh, you can also use. So I want us to go to something we normally call as uh, updating of tuples. One thing that I just want to maybe highlight here is that tuples are, <coughs> so I'm going to write just a single line comment. So I can say tuples are immutable. So when I say that tuples are immutable, I mean that uh, you cannot uh, go and change and change their values. You cannot go messing around with their values. So you cannot go inserting. You cannot go uh, extending. You cannot go uh, removing, popping. 
So bo both things uh, normally wouldn't happen in tuples because by immutable I can also maybe want to affirm this by saying they are unchangeable. So but being programmers you can always find a root hole to, to alter this. So one is the way I can have maybe D my tuple D. So in my tuple D I'm go just going to use uh, integers. So these type of integers are natural numbers. So I'm just using natural numbers in this case. So what I want to do, I now want to apply the knowledge we discussed about casting in Python. So I want to cast the tuple and convert it into a list. So initially casting in Python, we did see how you can cast an integer into a fruit and vice versa. So by that knowledge, that is what we are going to use here. So I now want us to use casting. So I'm now going to have D. This time round, it is not going to be a, a tuple. It is going to be a list. So I'm going to cast it into a list. Then it being a list, maybe I want to, to add items into my tuple. So there are a couple of things I want to do. So I can say d dot uh, insert. Uh, so maybe I can uh, I can I can choose uh, to insert to insert to append also to uh, to extend. So I'm going to use I'm going to use the insert. So I want to insert at index. I want to insert just the where two is two is index one so i want to insert one i want to insert a string then uh, i can now come here and create another list remember that i'm now working with lists so that i convert my tuple into lists then uh by the uh by using all the methods that are used in lists I can update my list, I can extend, I can delete, I can remove, I can pop. By performing all those uh, tasks, I now convert my list back into a tuple. So that is how you achieve changing of items in a tuple. You have your tuple, use casting, cast it into a list, then use the list method, alter and change uh, for your writing, then convert it back into a tuple. Now I want to have a list of maybe other numbers. Just make them maybe quite different. Uh, maybe I can try to make them maybe one one. So my computer is quite slow. So I just want to make them random for distinguishing. So then I can now say d dot. Uh, dot extend so that I can extend with e then I can also have d dot append so maybe I can append something such as a unique number such as 2024 then I can also have d dot remove I can remove a uh, 5 from 8 Then I can also have maybe d dot pop so that I can maybe pop index. What is number six? That is zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that I can pop index five. Then maybe I can now convert my d into so d is equals to double can convert it into uh, into that D. then I can now print I can now print out D uh, so wa w once you perform all those operations you can now see our final tuple it's it's stronger than uh, our initial tuple here so what I've highlighted uh, in our terminal 
is our head tuple so you can see we have removed five we have popped i think here we should pop six yeah so we have popped six we have popped element six here we have removed five uh we have appended 2024 where is it it's here then we have extended so you see now we have a net result of the tuple so you can always so all this that i've done is what we did check yesterday at the uh, uh, python list there's also something else that uh, is quite good with the tuple so that is how you can change items in tuples the easiest way for you to achieve that is by using lists So now, uh, I want us to go to something extra on tuples, something we normally call unpacking of tuples. So I'm just going to come here and highlight it with a single line comment. And I'm going to say unpacking of tuples. So now, in unpacking of tuples, I can have a tuple, maybe Q. Then I can assign it wild animals, so I can have monkey. Mm, maybe let me include a domestic, such as a goat. Then I can include maybe a cow. Then I can include iguana. Then I can include hedgehog. So you can see now I've got that tuple. It contains strings. Now suppose I want to unpack. Suppose I want to unpack this tuple so that I can assign if this is domestic, if this is wired, this is wired, this is domestic. So what, how do I go about it? So I can come here and also say monkey is wired. Uh, because because I want to, so I'm going to directly wild, then go to is domestic. Then we have got cow is still domestic. Then we have got iguana is wired. Then we have got hedgehog is wired. Then to unpack, I'm going to equate it to Q. So now uh, having done this. Uh, I can now come and print. So let me see if I printed domestic. So if I printed domestic, we can see cow, which is the 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 second one. That is what gets printed out. So basically, if you wanted even go to get printed, you'd say maybe domestic one. Then domestic, then wired, then wired maybe one, then this one will be wired two. So that you can have if now I wanted go to get printed, I would say print, then I would say domestic one. The reason as to why if you use domestic domestic, it prints the, the last one. It prints the last updated one. So that is how you can achieve uh, printing out. Uh, there is something else. Suppose I do not want to write all this, or suppose maybe I still have this kind of tuple. So I'm going to copy it here, and I'm going to have QR. Then I'm going to have my the, the same same kind of tuple, but now this time round I want to have all the way a uh, monkey is wired. But now I have all the way as a uh, I have anti from goat to cow, those who are domestic, so I'm going to say domestic. So maybe I can use an asterisk, then domestic. Then I can also say, then the others are wired. So maybe, I don't know if this will work if I use two asterisks. I think this can work if I use one. Then I use an asterisk and say all the rest is all. So le let's see, let's see, let's see how this fares. So I will now want. I've not yet equated this to R. 
so that I can now print something such as domestic. <coughs> uh, multiple, so maybe uh, what I can do, I can let me get rid of this so that once I use cow and goat. So many of yeah. So I think I think this this should work. So I'm going to replace maybe this one with hen. So I want us to just see the first case. You can use a selic. Then maybe I can see a sheep. So uh, the the reason as why I'm using an selic. The reason as why I've changed these two. I wanted to illustrate how you can use an asterisk uh, to assign all the other elements that are there. So you can see that the first one, the first one we have got monkey assigned to wild. Then all these are now assigned to domestic. So the way I, I achieve that by only assigning it using one, uh, using one word, I just put an asterisk in front of the word. So uh, that is maybe something else maybe you can also note. So you can use an asterisk in such a uh, in such a way. Then so there is one more thing we need to see. So let's see if I now added uh, the hedge hog. So with that now, suppose now I came here and now said uh, this as wired one. So that now I would now print wired one. So let's see. Yeah, so we now achieve the hedgehog. So you might also see some people always like them fancy. So you can you can also use underscore. So you can also find someone instead of writing wired, they can use an underscore. Remember, you said uh, variables can come up with underscores. So maybe I can use one underscore here, or maybe two. No, let me use three. If I use two, it will resort to an error because this one will be repeated here. So I'm going to use three. So we expect the output still to be the same. So you can always find maybe some people in their code they use such kind of uh, underscores. But we are going to discuss uh, much on this when we are dealing with classes. So the, the, the way we are using the underscores here is in no, in no way special. We are just using them to assign. So you can use maybe two underscores. Remember when you talked about assigning variables, you can use an underscore. So that is what you have just used. Just two underscores to... You can also use a name like we are using maybe wired or such. Now we now come back to loop. Uh, loops in tuples. Remember uh, yesterday we also said that uh, we have got the obligation to handle loops. So uh, we, we talked about loops. So yesterday we also had uh, a 30 minutes break to just uh, internalize and get familiar with loops. So when I say loops I mean the while loop. The while loop, and I also mean the for loop. So remember, we talked about uh, those types. So maybe a simple while loop you can always create is z is equals to maybe 19. Then you have got s is equals to maybe something such as 10. Then you can always say while uh, s is less than or equal to z. You always want to print your s. Then, uh, beside you printing your S, you want uh, it to increment. Uh, so I've used the plus sign here. Remember, remember these are comparison operators. Use these are comparison operators. It's not an assignment operator. Then I was I always want to have my S plus is equals to one. So let's see what uh, that gives us. So to make it maybe give us in a horizontal way, I'm going to use this feature. So let's see. 
so now you can see you can see we have achieved so remember we also said that uh, uh, these ones are also uh, com uh, we can basically say it's uh, it's another way of writing it's another way of writing s is equals to s plus one so you you can write it in this way or you can write it the way i've written it so maybe the reason as well I'm, I'm interchanging is just to really uh to really emphasize or maybe to really to really show show maybe uh to maybe just show other other ways you can uh, you can always achieve it So now, so uh, so that is how a while loop basically would work. Uh, so in this while loop, we have used uh, we have used maybe uh, uh, we have used some some of the operators there. So uh, we have used uh, the comparison uh, operator that is less than or equal to s is less than or equal to z. So that one was one of the <coughs> one of the comparison uh, operators. Then in the end here we have used uh, an assignment uh, operator. So it, this one is from your knowledge on operators. Yeah, so uh, with that in mind, so maybe a small, uh, that is how a whole loop works. So I just wanted to illustrate how a whole loop uh, works. So let us see how you can also use the, the range, you can also use the, the length. <coughs> so I want us to first use the for loop. So I'm going to create a tuple T. Just use the round brackets. Then uh, with my tuple, I now want to use the for loop. So I'm going to say for i, I can choose a value i, q, z, any in range. So you can see where the range comes in. So the range uh, function. Then inside my range function, I want to pass the length. So the length of my tuple T. So I want to loop through all the items in my tuple T. So I want to print. So if I want to print the items, I can say T. And I can say maybe my I. So that is one way you can, uh, you can always uh, achieve. So you can see they are, they are now printed out here. So that that is one way you might uh, you might want to use your uh, your while loop uh, your for loop. So you can always you can always decide maybe to to also to play around with it. You can you can use the range. You can use the length. So you you always you are always free you always free to uh, to, to to always to always check it in any way. So the other thing I want just to remind you is about what we talked about the random. This one is it's just a reminder. So I can import random, then I can print yeah, from the print function, then I can print maybe random dot rand rand integer for maybe one to twenty. That is from A to B, from point A to B, where point A is the starting, point B is the ending. Then I can print radom dot rand range. Here I can say from point A, from the start to the stop as 12. Then I can, let's see if there is other ways you can also 
random dot so we are going to to use the random dot choice when you are so that one I, I will not use it now you are going to use that when you are doing a uh, supervised machine running so the reason as why choice is used is because maybe you want to select some uh, to select a random sample from your data maybe you want to train your model so you might consider using that so th that is this is just a reminder of random so uh, because we, we we looked at that so i now want to go to for loops in tuples so to do that i'm going to come here so let me scroll up so that we can now create a tuple e and now we create a for loop so my tuple e then i'm going to, no, not a for loop but a while loop so now i'm now going to create my maybe i can say my initial value i remember this is how a while loop begins i wanted to start at index zero and i can say where uh, i uh, should be less than the length uh, so instead of me writing a value like 10 or instead of me writing 20 i can i can compute the length of my suppose i have a very large tuple and i don't have the time to count each of them so i can use the length function so i can say length e using length e i can now print out uh, the root so i can now say print uh, inside here i may also want to print the numbers uh, individually so my e is the tuple i want to print the values in it that is i then i want to maybe increment them by one so i plus equals which is an assignment operator so you are assigning i the value uh one plus i so that is what it means so in other people may write just as we have talked about other people may write it as i is being assigned the value i plus one so you may write it in either way yeah so uh this is the the output of the uh, of the wire loop so that is this a basic thing uh in uh in loop uh, in the tuple uh, loops so you can always maybe you can always experiment uh, in different types of ways so uh, maybe the other thing we will also check it's about how do you join different types of tuples how do you concatenate so in Python instead of maybe saying joining we can always use the word concatenate which basically means I want to join a tuple A with a tuple B so remember in concatenation we use the arithmetic operator addition sign so that one was really much in strings so concatenation in lists was different because we would extend a list a we extend it by uh, using the extend method so we extend list a with list b so in tuples i can have a tuple t so my tuple t i'm going maybe to give it a down value like that then with my tuple t uh, i can want to extend it so i can now create a new so I, i'm talking about joining so i can want to to join it from tuple e and tuple t so how do i achieve that i'll have my new tuple as w so my tuple w is going to have e plus t where the plus there is the arithmetic operator from our back recall about operators so we can now say print we can now print our new tuple uh, our new tuple w so uh so we can learn this so that is how you you join uh you join tuples so some people may also want to multiply them so z is equal so you can perform some arithmetic from them so i can multiply it with t so let's see what this gives t 
I can print and also add because I do not want to keep on writing print and also so let's run this I can't multiply by non int so you've got E and you've got uh, T uh, the way maybe I, ca I can also I can I can get to this I can multiply in you instead of multi you cannot achieve that so I can multiply it by 3 so let's see so we have got uh, so this one is printing out the new line uh, here so I think to avoid that I, I'm going to Mm, this one won't work but basically it can still remain as that yeah so now you, you can see that you have got this is the first one that is w and this is the second one that is uh, z so when i say multiply by 3 i mean this one the first time we write it so we have written until 9 then we go we write it another second time until nine we write it another third time three times so that is what uh, that uh, multiplication by three will mean uh, so maybe you, ca you can you can always go and experiment other methods in tuples so that is all you needed to know about tuples so i now want us to go to python sets 